Hello, welcome to jasonnewland.com My name's Jason Newland This is Let Me Bore You to Sleep um, And I am coming to you from a shed <laughs> from a garden shed that's standing in my bedroom now you may be, you know, may be thinking now wow that is far from boring and I agree I think you're right it's probably among the most exciting things that's ever happened, ever, to anyone. But yeah, I'm in a shed. <sighs> Why did I buy a shed? Isn't it weird? So all I can hope is that the sound quality is better because there's hopefully less background sounds and according to the headset mic It's kind of just peaking. Um, it's being the microphone's being stimulated a little bit when I'm not talking, but not much. This is just weird. <laughs> it's just really, really weird. I'm not sure if it's one of my better ideas. Definitely not one of my... It's been an expensive venture. Because it's cost me... £229 for the shed but I'll be paying off that in instalments over the next six months or something but then it's cost me so far to get help to put it up 40, 50, 60 over £100 to get it put up Because uh, I want to help. Because I can't. I just. I don't know how to do stuff like this. So, so far. £329. £330, let's say. It's cost to get this. Recording studio. Built. Yeah, and I was, you know, it's, uh, it's weird, it's just weird, it's even for me, and I'm, I don't want to like, <laughs> say horrible things about myself, but yeah, I'm, there's definitely a weirdness, <laughs> this is, even for me, it's a bit out there, a garden shed in my bedroom. Now, if you can find someone else in the world that has a garden shed in their bedroom, I'll kind of be surprised and impressed. Oh, man. 
So my friend gave me a chair. It's a really comfy chair, actually. It's like a therapy chair. Uh, very similar to the kind of chairs that I used to use when I was counselling. So it's comfortable. It supports my lower back. But it's not a recliner or anything. So I'm not going to fall asleep. And my legs are nice and straight. You know the straight parts before the knees. The thighs, that's it, thighs. And then... I don't come dizzy. Why am I describing my legs to you? But the shape is just... It's just right for my height. Just right for my height. And I was hoping that with this shed I wouldn't hear any background sounds. I can hear the plane in the, in the ground, in the ground, in the sky. Surely it must be, but it must be stopping some of the sound because I can't hear Andre scratching at the living room door, and I know he is. So I got this done, basically I got it delivered yesterday, or the day before, what day is it now, it's Thursday, so I got it delivered on the Thursday. And the the text that I got from them, I got it from, I ordered it on the catalogue online, and it's, uh, you know, it's good because I can pay it off bit by bit over however long I want really and I ordered it last week probably yeah Tuesday last week or Wednesday I don't know can you hear that it's the wrong material because it's mind you the idea is the only time if it does get to the point where the only thing you can hear is my voice and nothing else I'd need to be completely still for the entire recording not even moving my hands or anything which isn't really practical so I'm perhaps give myself too much of a hard time I suppose after investing all this money I kind of want I want a result from it you know I want I want something to show for it because I don't have money to spend on stuff like this so I want a, a better quality sound as a result Otherwise, it's just been a waste of time, really. I don't, you know, believe it or not, I don't, for any other reason, I would not need a garden shed in my bedroom. It's not one of those things that I've always longed for. You know, it's not a really a garage in my kitchen. You know, it's just not something. Yeah, it's, I mean, I like it. I probably would have liked it better when I was little, because then the shed would be bigger. To me, it wouldn't be bigger, but it would seem bigger. And I could, if I was creative. I could make it into a nice little room and get some lighting in there. I could get some, even some bookcases, some bookshelves rather, and have my hypnosis books in here and you know, stuff like that. But I don't know, it smells 
weird. It smells like damp wood. And some of it is a bit damp, but not much of it. It was only, because on Tuesday, when it was delivered, it was raining. But I think the, the pallet that I had my shed on had it had, had a, another pallet on top of it previous which had um, sheltered it from the storm and I'm guessing they delivered that pallet of that shed first because it wasn't there on top of mine making sweet shed love so it wasn't there so the part of the wood was wet now a text I received from them on I think it was Sunday or it might have been Saturday said dear Mr JJ we are going to deliver your shed between 7.35 and 10.35 I think it's, it's an estimate I think it's it was that's about the time they said so because I knew I wouldn't be going to bed till about 6 or 7 anyway I decided to stay up until the shed was delivered then I would go to bed uh, which makes sense because I just I'd have felt probably a bit groggy and who knows I might have been so fast to sleep that I hadn't you know wasn't didn't wake up Wadden. I just said the word wadden. It's not really a word, is it? It was. I think there's a mix between wasn't and wouldn't. I wouldn't wake up. So I stayed up. And it's one of those memories now that I've got, and it's quite a nice little memory staying up waiting for the shed to arrive the garden shed for my bedroom it's one of those things that will probably stay with me for you know forever I have that little memory you know just it wasn't so much a feeling of excitement and I just remembered I haven't said please only listen when you can Safely close your eyes. Unless I did, then I said it twice. So I wasn't so much excited. I don't. I don't know. I was almost intrigued. I almost kind of didn't believe that I'd really ordered a shed for my bedroom. There was a little part of me thinking no. Even I wouldn't do that. But I would, apparently. One of those things that I, I, I ordered it probably four o'clock in the morning and woke up the next day and just, oh, that was a weird dream. No, it wasn't. It really happened. So, I was waiting around for the shed to be delivered. And I've never ever ordered a shed before. So I didn't really know what to expect. I mean, what I think would be really good, because I don't deliver it fully made, which is a shame although it wouldn't have fitted through the door 
but I thought what it would be good you know the there's a thing you used to be able to get if it was it food what was it um but you add water and it just grows bigger so that would be good if you like have your little shed that fitted through the door put it where you want it and then you just sprinkled some water out of a teapot or whatever and it just grew you know to the right size is that the kind of stuff they have for mountaineers? Not not growing sheds, but that the mixture. Oh no, flat flat packs. Oh, do you know when you buy stuff, you can get like a duvet, and it's thin as anything, and it's in that plastic that um, which sucks you off the air sucks sucks off the air out of the um out of the packaging so the duvet is flat i don't know what they call it it might be called flat packing flapping placking flapping i don't know some kind of but it sucks you off sucks off all the air out of the the plastic bag thing which minimises the amount of space it takes. So if they could have delivered the shed like that, just put it into one of those big bags and then sucked off the air, sucked it all off, so that the shed became tiny. And then you open a bag and suddenly it pops out. Or like one of those little shed, um, the tents like a pop-up tent but a pop-up shed and I wouldn't have to worry about trying to put it back in into the the packaging because I'm going to keep it here because basically whoever lives in this flat next is going to inherit this shed <laughs> I'm never taking it down ever this is here forever and ever not after all the hassle. Oh, this, this is here. The thing is, I don't need storage room because I've got a big storage room anyway. So, I'm thinking I could double it up as like a big wardrobe and put some hooks and things on the side to hang up clothes, but... I don't know. I just want it to be for this. The only reason I bought it was for this, to make recordings, and hopefully so it's quieter, because I don't do many shouty, shouty stuff, you know, everything I do is kind of quiet-ish, kind of quiet-ish, relaxing, sleepy, you know, that kind of stuff. And the good thing about it is I've got quite a, quite a big bedroom. So the shed uh, doesn't take up. It does, I mean, it's, it's a six by three foot shed. And we could easily get another two sheds in this room. But yeah, so it's okay. There's plenty of room for my double bed, and there's not as much room as what there was, obviously, because there's now less room. <laughs> that makes sense. There's not as much room because it's less room now, or well, more room's being taken up. But it's the same space, it's just got a little. This space is just surrounded by wood. The space is still there. I'm not sure that makes sense. And what's weird, it sounds like it's raining. And if that is the case, I can hear the rain. But the thing is, 
and that's something I may need to address possibly in fact thinking about it that would have made more sense is the way I've got it set up is the back of the shed is not that far from the window which is the bit I perhaps need it to be away from so perhaps I need to turn it no I can't turn it around oh um uh, see a couple of people have said to me because I was thinking it probably would be better over where my bed is because it's away from the window it's near two walls which are also soundproof and it's away from the door so I'll be sitting yeah I'll be pretty quite a bit quieter However, as I said to the two people that said to me, why don't you move your bed? And I said, I like my bed where it is. And I didn't realize how attached I was to the positioning of my bed. But I really do like my bed where it is. See, I like my bed. I really, really, really like my bed. And it's the first time I've ever had a nice bed in my life. Well, as an adult, I'm sure my beds were nice when I was about a kid, I don't know. But as an adult, it's the first time I've had my own double bed with a nice quilt. And it was quite expensive. I bought it when I first moved in here four years ago and it was, it was an expensive little adventure moving in here a washing machine cooker so a new washing machine new cooker new carpet and a new bed a new fridge and freezer so that, that was a lot of uh, quite a bit of money but that bed oh lovely and it's just the right size for me so it's a double bed I need a double bed for me I can't sleep in a single bed and I used to for the first what, 44 years of my life pretty much 45 years so for four years four and a half years I've lived in a I've slept in a double bed before that pretty much always in a single bed no, I don't want to go back to a single bed I like a double bed it's nice it's really so I can stretch stretch out stretch my legs out I take up the whole bed it's not because I'm, fl I'm flat <laughs> it's not because I'm fat it's because I'm flat because when I lay down everything just goes flat because I've got no muscles you see and I do take up the entire bed. It's great. But I like that. It's nice. It's really, oh, so relaxing. I like to have a wall. I don't mean to keep the house up. I mean, I like to have a wall near on one side of the bed ideally the side that I'm not getting in which I have here I've got, I get in the bed as I go in the room on the left hand side that's where the bed is and I, I get in that side but it's pushed up against a wall there's a wall behind it and a wall um, the other side so if you if you go to the bottom of the bed and face the, the not skirting board, the bed board, board bed, headboard, headboard. On the left hand side, there's just air 
yeah, there's, just, there's no, there's no, the bed, ed, the bed ends, but there's nothing, you know, and then there's the doorway and stuff. On the right hand side, there's a wall. That's what I mean. So there's a wall there. And when I first moved in, I brought my single bed with me from my other place because I had to buy a single bed because the one they had was like one of those really old metal kind of thing that I used to use in the 80s and it was uh, didn't like it didn't like it at all so I, I bought my own bed from the Heart Foundation shop and it was uh it was fairly comfortable. It was it wasn't expensive, but it was okay. So I brought that with me here because I needed to sleep. You know, I needed a bed to sleep on. And when I moved in here, it was an empty flat. There's no carpet. Lots of paint stains on the on the the floor. I said floor. And so I came here and I had. A chair, an old chair that I'd had in the other place, and and I've been in there since 2012. I've been there two fifteen, fourteen. I don't know so I was there for a couple of years so when I first moved in I didn't have anything to sit on and I mean I didn't have any buttocks I mean I didn't have a chair to sit on and where I lived before it was this it's hard to even explain it it was this little um, not dungeon that's the wrong word um underneath the ground uh, room it was under the ground it had a window but it was the basement that's it basement and uh, I knew someone that actually that knew the building before it was converted and it used to be nurses quarters because the place was just around the corner from the hospital and uh, the what the whoever bought the house turned it into multiple living whatever you call it and he converted so basically my room that I was in was two room one room turned into two it's a tiny so with the two rooms it was quite a big room but when you broke it into two, it was a very small room to live in. So it's basically it was a living room. Um, and it was, from the looks of it, it had like a living room with a kitchen in it. Then there was a bedroom at the back and a bathroom. So I'm guessing that used to be a flat that someone would live in just that flat and it probably was an okay flat and maybe the nurses maybe they lived in the living room maybe I don't know maybe they lived and shared shared a room in the bedroom and uh, I'm not saying they shared showers but I'm just saying they shared they might, might have done but they, they shared the hmm the shower wasn't big to be fair it's one of those the bathroom was a nice size so I'm guessing it used to have a bath but it was go in there and it 
it's just a shell. Uh, one of those. Oh, it's a shell. It looked like a shower. Um, with like pl plastic and glass doors, you know, that you go in and you step inside. And next to it was a toilet. The thing is, this, the water pressure of this shower, it had the lowest water pressure I've ever known in my entire life. The water basically just dripped out. There was, there was no pressure. Well, there was some pressure, but very little. And it was kind of funny because so I'd wash my body uh, with some soap and then because there was no pressure I couldn't just stand underneath it and put my arms up and let the water you know let the, the water just wash away the soap or rinse away the soap I had to take the take the nozzle well not the nozzle but you know the the bit where the water comes out of so I had to put that in take that in my hand and I actually had to aim it at different parts of my body so if I wanted to sort of try and uh, rinse my underneath my arms don't want to say the word armpit it sounds awful, awfully rude Armpit, armpit, armpit. How are your armpits today? Oh, my armpits are fine, thank you for asking. That's very kind of you. Armpit, armpit, I don't know. That shouldn't, it's not really rude, is it? But what I do is I'd have the water or the nozzle of the shower head probably two inches away from my armpit and the water still wouldn't reach my armpit it was that bad of pressure I'd literally have to hold it above my armpit or like where my arm was and let it drip down my arm until eventually it washed away the soap from my armpit very unusual very very strange place to live I've, I've lived in well, if I made a recording about all the places that I've lived in you just wouldn't believe it well you might but I've probably lived in about 45 I've moved I think since I left school I've moved home about 45 times Something like that. So it's quite a lot really, isn't it? And I almost feel like I moved home now. Like with a shed. Moved into the shed. I wonder if it's gonna be warm in there. I don't know if it's a psychological thing for but I almost feel like I'm outside. Which is kind of weird because I've never actually had a shed before. I don't actually remember ever sitting inside a shed before. Not even in a garden. I don't, can't even remember who that I've known had sheds. There's my dad, he's got sheds, he's always had sheds and stuff like that. My granddad used to have a shed. Um, what sheddy people are there? Andre sheds hair, but that's, that's not really the same, is it? 
Um, Andre thinks this shit is his. He actually thinks it's his. This is his new place to play now. And the thing is, the chair that I've got, and there's literally, it's going to move my arms, this. There's probably a finger, a finger length between the end of the side of the chair and the side of the shed on either side. There's a very small amount of um, space to manoeuvre around the chair. Now Andre goes underneath the chair because he knows I can't get to him. He loves that. So I don't know whether to embrace it and make the shed all comfortable for him by putting down some clothes and stuff for him to sleep on or just to ban him from it which means he's going to be continuously scratching trying to get in although he can get in because it's, there's only a, a, a lock on the outside on the inside rather I've got a padlock on the inside just to keep the door closed it's not to keep it locked and it's flimsy you could just push the door open if you wanted um, but the not the lock in fact the lock is probably the strongest part of the whole shit apart from maybe the base the base is fairly sturdy but I've got a big proper the kind of lock that you'd have on a like a security lock something you can add a um, a padlock to but uh, I suppose I could just share it with him but he's going to come in here anyway when I'm not around likes it in there and it's, there's that smell as well that he, he I don't know, I, feel, I don't even know he might have gone to the toilet in there knowing oh if he thinks it's a toilet oh man I don't want to be sitting in this in this enclosed space with his uh, no nah, that doesn't appeal to me at all what, uh, what can I do I suppose I could lock it you know, get a latch or something to to make sure it's locked so he can't get in but it seems almost cruel to just take this space away from him especially as he's he really wants to come in here he loves it in here it's and it's also got these, um, the base is got a gap between each bit of wood that goes all the way through, which means he can climb and almost dig. So he can go all the way from one end to the other underneath the base. He did that yesterday. He enjoyed it. He was like, the first thing, I was thinking, what if he gets stuck? All I could hear is you know, scratching, scratching, a little bit of movement. Then he pops out the other side, very happy. He's a, he's a strange lad, he is. But he likes it in here, I don't know why. Maybe it's the smell, maybe it's the, the smell of the fresh wood, he's his sense of smell is a lot more sensitive than mine or than humans I can't ask myself, I suppose I'm kind of human am I so his sense of smell is I don't understand I don't understand 
if his sense of smell is so much more acute and stronger and intense than a human's why does he like horrible smells you know a sewage you know any drain any single drain that he comes up to he all he wants is to go down that drain that's his he'd be so happy and he's not a rat it's a ferret. He's, it's not even a full ferret. He's a, a mixed ferret polecat, and he's not supposed to live down drains. He's supposed, to, you know, nature. He'd be in fields and forests, and I suppose some parts of the world even maybe in deserts. I don't know, but he'd, he'd, you know, not in the sewer. But he's just got a thing for really awful smells and feet he loves feet absolutely adores feet he's, he's got a I don't know what it is I don't know why it is but he's been like that since he was a kid loves feet he loves sniffing them, licking them, nibbling them and biting them. Not biting horrible, but just biting, basically just nibbling them. Loves feet. Preferably feet with no socks on. But it's not only the feet, it, it bites my ankles, he bites, it, it just, he can't stop himself. I have to I have to close the bathroom door when I'm having a bath. That's after I've covered up all the mirrors. So I don't give myself a chop. But he I have closed the door because when I get out of the bath he's all over me. Biting at my toes and my feet. It's like And my feet, I mean technically they should be cleaner because I just had a bath. But he loves the feet. So that's uh, Andre. I've left him in the other room. I think he was outside to eat. So I left him. I hope that he's calmed down a bit. He'll forgive me eventually. So yeah, I've got this shed. Unfortunately, I've got no drink. I've got nothing to drink because I've got nowhere to put anything. Because there's, there's no room. <laughs> Unless, I don't know, it's maybe it's some kind of glass holder that hung from the ceiling or something. Unless I put a sh some kind of shelf on the side, that could be could be a possibility. It's very that's just strange, and I do need a drink now. Because if you talk talking, I've been talking for forty four minutes or something, and I say that like I'm guessing. I know it's exactly. 44 minutes and it's nice to have a little bit of liquid on my tongue something to lubricate my throat you know I'll be okay I'll be alright don't you worry I'll be fine so I got this shed delivered on Tuesday I think they turned up about just before 10 o'clock I'm guessing I don't know it could be after 10 but it was around that time and I saw the van 
or the Loi because I heard like I heard some uh, it, it sounded like a I had to explain it it sounded like a shed delivering the lorry it just it had that sound now, I've never seen a shed delivering lorry before but my feelings kind of matched the well basically it was supporting evidence really for my for my proposal that that's how a, a lorry would sound when it's delivering sheds and it was it was the it was that exactly so what I did is I came downstairs it was raining outside a little bit and I said hello and he said yeah and I said oh I said look I can't be bothered to have like this weird conversation with you just for the sake of the recording and he said oh yeah fair enough so as I went outside, he said, um, are you able to deliver the shed upstairs? Because I live up there. And he said, no. No. He said, we're not allowed inside the building. Okay. But he said, oh, I'll put it, into, I'll put it in the hallway, though. And I said, well, that's inside the building, isn't it? And he said, do you want to help or not? I said, oh yeah, yeah, sorry. So they put it into the hallway, not of my flat, but of the uh, communal area. The congregation, <laughs> a place where we all congregate. No, there's a, it's, a, it's just a hallway really. And what I said, I said, I'll just give you a hand to move it, might as well. I only carried the light stuff though, which it turns out was most of it. None of it was, some of it was uh, heavy-ish. Most of it was uh, fairly light. But uh, I think, I don't know why I'm doing that. Uh, it sounds, this feels right. Uh, some of it was uh, quite light. I was uh, heavy. Uh, I might start trying that out in real life, seeing if it's how annoying it is to people. Good morning, how are you? Yeah. Hello. Nice to see you. Yeah. That could work. Good. Go into the garage. I'll just pay for these on my card, please. That's it. I'll pay for the pay for these on my card, please. Or I'll I'll pay by cash. Yeah. Feels a little bit forced, really. Um, yeah, so I helped them unpack or uh, move parts of the shed from the truck. It was like a, a lorry, but an open lorry. And I mean, um, as in open minded or an open relationship, I mean, it's just. There was no cover to the lorry. There was no, there was no roof, or it, you might pronounce it roof, but it's not. It's roof. That's how it's supposed to be pronounced. Roof is what a, what a dog does. A doggy goes for roof. A cat goes meow. A piggy goes oink 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 oink. Giraffe goes. Well, no, 
how this know what a giraffe goes because we can't hear it because it's so bloody tall. So I did. I'm going to write a children's book. I could do that, couldn't I? Do a children's book. Book? A book. Hello, children. We're now going to make farm farmyard noises. <laughs> yeah, I could do that. So... Yeah, so I helped with the shed pieces uh, from the lorry. And there was a fair bit. And... As I said, I, when I was unloading it, I only took the light stuff because I have some back. I have a back. Some people say, hey, we've all got a back, haven't we? I said, yeah, but I've got issues. We've, always got, we've all got issues, haven't we? I said, no, but I've got specifically some uh, uh, back issue. Oh, did you hear that? My ankle just cracked. Oh, the other day, a couple of weeks ago, I don't know if I mentioned this, but I was showing off about how fit my legs were and how, you know, how it's really, I've got a belly, but the rest of me is quite firm and muscly and everything. And I pulled my, I pulled my trouser up to show my calf muscle. Uh, to prove that I've got quite, because I have got quite slim legs, and it's all upper body weight with me, and so I was showing off, and I tense my um, calf muscle on my right leg to show the muscle, and it seized up, and it cramped, and it was, oh, and it just stayed like in the tense position, it just stayed there for a uh, uh, about five ten minutes <laughs> it's just what it's like oh do I, what do I need to do Eat, do I need to have some salt what what's going on and I think I just had pizza earlier so that's full of salt isn't it pizza I mean, not, I mean, it's not just full of salt there are other things connected to it but it did have yeah it was definitely after that so anyway I helped to get the shed off the lorry and we put it into the hallway and I signed it and I, I said uh, is it fairly easy to put up and he said can you please ask that in a, a more I don't know just manly way and I said what that's a bit rude I mean what's what's wrong with the way I said it it's got nothing to do with being manly or not I'm just asking about the shed and he said yeah I know but the way you asked was just annoying I said what excuse me I've just helped you unload the lorry I'm not he said, well, the whole lorry? I said, no, but my particular shed. And he said, listen, sir, until you sign this form, it is not to your shed. So I thought, oh, I can't even bother to just... Uh, so I signed it. And uh, we had a little kiss, you know, just a little... It wasn't. It didn't last long, but we made up and... Uh, promise to be faithful forever so it was good so I so I came and did the uh, I came inside they drove off and I was hoping that they'd wait until I'd finished writing my little poem to them but they had to run and I I looked at all the the wood and the panelling. Uh, 
got some big panels. One six foot panel. There's there's two six foot panels. No three. No four. I don't know. Anyway, there's some big panels and there's a door and all this stuff. And my friend did say to me the night before, wake me up if you need a hand, if they don't take it upstairs. I think he might point out that most people don't um, need to have their sheds taken upstairs. Which I couldn't kind of figure out why. And then, you know, well, most people have them in gardens. You ever heard of a bedroom shed before? Bathroom shed? Kitchen shed? Loft shed? No. Okay. Everyone's out to get me. And uh, I said, because um, it was too early, because I saw them about two o'clock in the morning previous, and I thought, no, I can't wake him up too early because it, it's I don't like being woken up so I just thought no so I decided I'd carry it upstairs on my own so I couldn't leave it down there because I might not be down there in a couple of hours it might get taken so I, um, because I know how well, I just, all I can do is I can imagine how popular bedroom sheds are uh, plus it was uh, probably you know it's it was a bit of it wasn't taking up the whole hallway but it was taking up quite a bit so I took <laughs> I took up bits bit by bit upstairs and sweat was spraying off me it was it was weird and there was a few bits that were quite heavy but most of it was fairly you know, easy but it was awkward because it was long I'm not used to handling long things so it was I did it eventually put it up outside my front door in the hallway upstairs and I got all the bits up there and then I transferred it from the hallway outside my front door into the hallway inside my well not my front door doesn't have a hallway inside it the front door opens and then there's a hallway inside the flat but the actual doorway is just wood so I put in um, I put everything into the hallway of my flat and by that time I was knackered really knackered I felt like I'd moved a shed which I had really twice and three times really two and a half times because I moved half of the shed from the lorry into the hallway but the light side and it's not that I kind of guessed that it was light I was specific I said just hand me light bits so I've got a back. And he said, we've all got a back. Oh, come on, not this again. And uh, it was, it, it was taking up quite a lot of room in my hallway. And this was Tuesday morning. My friend was going to help me. He asked him to help me. And, uh, and I sort of paid him to to do it. He, to be fair, he didn't didn't ask for any money, but it's it's a big job. It was quite a big big thing. And uh, and then someone else uh, last night, Wednesday night, Wednesday night, yeah. actually came and he put it up so I paid gave him some money and he actually put the thing up he, he had help because you can't do it one handed because not one handed um, you can't
can't do it one person because yeah, people have to hold the stuff together while you're hammering and not while you're hammering but while you hammer in the nails or I suppose while you're hammering and the at one point there was three people doing it while I was watching and it got done so in the end it got done and Wednesday night it took a couple of hours because the yeah it just took a couple of hours to get it all done and then I had to go to sleep I was just snackered by the whole thing and my soundproofing phone that I've got my friend gave me some glue so I thought oh, I'll try that out start putting some on doesn't work falls right off the wood doesn't attach to the wood attached fine to my wall in the living room ain't attaching to the wood of the inside of this so I don't know I might have to look at getting some of that um is it no nails you know stuff that just glues anything to anything so I might look at getting some of that but I can't believe it it's like oh so I'm talking in the shed but there's no soundproofing once it's soundproofing in, it should be uh, sound a lot no, I suppose technically it should be just no sound at all apart from when I talk and the dials on the microphone so let me show you there are one, two, three, four, five, six. There's six dials on the mic. When I don't say anything, it goes to about half of one. And then when I talk, it goes to about three, maybe touching four. Now before, when I do this in the living room or in the bedroom, it would normally be at least two without me even talking. So it's, I would say it's definitely reduced background sounds. which hopefully will increase the quality of the sound but that will increase or well, that will become better because once I've got the soundproofing in and I've already bought all the soundproofing which I bought uh, earlier in the year and I put that on the walls in the living room so now I'm taking it off the walls in the living room I'm going to have to redecorate the wall in the living room because it's just got all these black marks of fur it's a very furry it's a very furry wall and eventually I'll have within the next week I probably I can't afford to buy any glue proper glue till next Wednesday and then I'll put up the soundproofing which I'm hoping should really make a difference yeah I hope so I think it's yeah, I'm quite pleased but it's it's a case of just seeing um, 
it's up now it's not going anywhere and I'm not taking it down although taking it down would be a lot easier than putting it up I could just rip it apart with my hands probably to be fair but it's not it's 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 not it's 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 it's, it's yeah it's it's not you wouldn't want to live in it although it definitely would give you shelter you know I'd rather be in this than be outside when it's raining well that would be nice oh I almost wish I could have it outside so I could just hear the sound of the rain because this would be quite nice quite a nice little space to relax in you know to just lay back and just chill out and, or meditate or something like that but I think I need to add some lights so maybe some lights around the ceiling just to make it a little bit bright well there's no light at all but the light from the bedroom shining in through the door the door basically looks like it's just floating there from the outside it looks really like secure but from the inside it looks it does honestly it looks like it's just floating like some kind of illusion for David Copperfield it's a David Copperfield shed I guess you call it David Copperfield and we all know what I mean David Copperfield that's the name of the shed now the magician or or Paul Daniels I call it Paul Daniels no it doesn't make sense does it right so I'm going to go thank you very much for listening I'll speak to you next time and please remember to be kind to yourself because you deserve to be happy lots of love